Okay, so this is um, start chin rest. So this is Archie. That's the nail said Archie. Then. Um, so Archie's only been in two weeks. Now, normally we don't start chin rest till six, but I've been seeing a few issues with dogs with husbandry issues. So I just wanted to start it early um, with him. So basically we use a chair. Archie, out the bin. Why is it you teach your chin rest, please? Um, it's basically, it's the dog giving consent to be examined and groomed. Almost like the bucket game. Yeah, a little bit. Um, he does like, <laughs> squeaking the towel through his teeth and it makes me cringe. So we use a towel, basically as a bit of an indicator that the session's starting. But also to give the dog something. Because so normally we get him to find a chair um, as an objective. So this is like distinguishing the two. So this means chin rest. Could you use, obviously, a uh, puppy walk we don't teach? Targeting the chair, so would you just go immediately onto your knee instead of teaching um, on the chair? You can teach it on a hand as well, so I, I can show you both. So a hand one is better. I tend not to use the knee one. It's a personal choice. It's basically because we use it primarily for a client later on. So if a dog's given a chin rest on it and a lap, it tends to be used in veterinary situations where the vet might be doing things and nobody wants it's quite a personal area that, that it might be done yeah on. yeah also just for like um it is easier for like um if you need both hands but i like one on a hand and one on a chair because if you're grooming you can get to the back of the dog using the chair okay okay i know we're gonna try so basically what you're looking for is is just you're marking for any touch onto the chair any touch and if they're not touching it you're looking for um a look towards the chair a movement towards the chair so and then with the feed towards the back of the chair so they're getting that um issue of putting the head right to the back of the chair it's just chewing <laughs> Sometimes it's just a case of waiting it out a little bit. Just so I mark that because she's just looking at the chair, which is better than good. So even at this stage, if he's just sniffing around the towel, that's absolutely fine. Sorry, my mistake there. Yeah, no. Sometimes if they're still sniffing, it's a bit. What you can do is we approach the dog as well, but it just is a bit more time consuming that. Ideally you want the dog this way as well rather than side on. Hello. Hello. Missed another one there, that's why he's frustrated. <laughs> Eventually, what you would do is build it up and build it up so the dog is going to touch the chair nine times out of ten. And then you would look for um, a duration period where the dog rests its head on the chair. And that's quite a tricky bit sometimes. Uh, people don't know, I tend to count it in my head. So I'll aim for one second and then two seconds. And then three seconds, and I build it up like that. But I, I'll generally do. Sorry. Because I'm talking at the same time. And sometimes he's staring at me, so I'm trying not to look him right in the eyeballs. <laughs> so he's just trying to work out what he's doing here, which is fine. So just quickly, sorry, how would you do it teaching to a hand? I'm going to do that now. Oh, thanks. So, generally with this, don't use a clicker because you've, you've got to use both hands. <laughs> so, generally you put a flat hand 
not too high, not too low, so in the middle. And you can use a hand touch target to get the dog to uh, focus on a hand touch. And then generally I'll move that hand touch away so I'm just using a finger and then I'll get rid of the hand. That generally means sometimes this is quite good for eye treatments because you're getting the dog used to your hand moving around the dog's face as well. Archie, come here sweetie. Yep. And if he keeps his head there, that's great. So if you notice, I'm feeding, so he's putting pressure on his chin. I'm not moving my hand, he's leaning it onto my hand. And that's how I would feed to teach that chin pressure. There's just a dog going past. Archie, Archibald. Good boy. Yep. And he want, if he wants to move away, that's fine, but I'll always feed back. Good lad. Good boy. Nice. Yep. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And what would the next step of that be, please? Um, that he's going to put the pressure on himself. So if you did that, ideally I want him to walk over and just put ever so slight pressure on and then build that pressure up and up and up. What, what, what would you do if he was just continually uh, yep. putting his head on the hand but without, without any pressure? So it was just kind of almost it's using it as a hand touch. What you can do is make sure your hand's flat. So as flat as possible so you're not confusing it mm -hmm. with um, a hand touch. Um, and feed in that position. So keep feeding in that position. <laughs> He's cheeky. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anything else? Uh, no, like I said, he, he's only done a couple of sessions. He's never done the hand one before. That's his first. Would, would you, and then eventually, would you do the chin rest and then like look in the ear and then treat and stuff? Because I know you just went yeah, to I almost do it then. Yeah, I wouldn't even start doing stuff like that. So basically, I'd just get the dog used to movement around, ever so slight movement. Um, uh, I mean like the end goal, sorry. It, yeah, yeah. So the ideally, what we do at the beginning, so chin rest is a really lengthy process if you're going to teach it right. So when the dogs come in for training, we tend to use a restraint that's quite quick to teach. So basically the dogs are gonna have a vet check generally in the first one to two weeks of them coming in and we want them to be comfortable having that. So we teach a restraint really, really early on. And that's about us touching the dog and physically holding the dog in position, holding its nose, holding its head. And it's just all about, I'll show you very quickly. You can do this on the floor and everything, that's fine. And if he backs away at any point, that's fine. Yep, good. Really light touch, really light. And then you can build it up. Yep, and he doesn't have to be still at this point, do you? No, you don't. And we don't generally go straight for the head. <laughs> you cheeky girl, yeah, aren't you? And most of the dogs do like this, they get a bit silly because they think they're being cuddled. Yes, you do. Then eventually, I think you'd have to just do it for the stillness, because obviously if it was in a vet yeah. scenario. Yep. Good. Okay. Good Anything else? Uh, no, restraint's a really good one to teach really quickly if you really need to get something done. So say the dog went on emergency eye treatment, you're not going to have a chance to do a chin rest. You're not going to have a chance to do anything like that. So restraint is something you can teach a dog from very, very, very early on, and it's really quick. Oh! Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Bye.